many of you know, today, starting at 2 o'clock, we went through a very rigorous examination process for all my students. They got evaluated. Um, very good, excellent, satisfactory, and were graded on all their performance pieces. And our lovely evaluator decided to give you all a gift back to put herself on the evaluation side and give you guys some music. So she's loved. She's excited to share some music with you guys. She's going to talk about the history and talk about stage fright. It's going to be a more educational process. Also, many of you guys had to use a new harp today. How many of you guys used a new harp that you would never played on before or hadn't played on for weeks? Like most of you guys hadn't played on the harp. Jackie has never played on my harp before, and since it has the pedals and all the strings, it'll be just as uncomfortable as it was for most of you guys today. So she is in the exact same spot as you. Um, anyway, let's welcome Jackie. Um, well, thank you guys for having me, and thank you so much for playing for me today. It was really a pleasure to listen to all of you. And as Crystal said, I didn't think that it was fair that you guys were in the hot spot all day. So I thought that I would play, you know, play a little bit for you and just tell you a little bit about how, you know, sort of how I think about performing and something about the history of the pieces and just a couple things to sort of round out your understanding of um, just playing the harp, basically. And so one thing I would say before I start is that one of the major points of having you guys come here today to play was to practice performing because it's really important to practice not just your music at home but to practice actually performing and getting out there and playing in front of other people because I I don't know what it is if it's something turns on or something turns off but something is different when you're performing for other people and the only way to get better at it is by practicing and the only way to practice performing is to get out and play in front of people so that's great that you guys came today to do this, and this will be great practice for me as well. It's a, sort of a lifelong skill that we're always honing to getting better at performing and playing the harp. So I look forward to getting myself some more experience today too. The first piece I'm gonna play for you guys is called Song in the Night, and it's by Carlos Salzedo, who is a very famous, uh, was a very famous harpist and who pioneered a lot in harp technique. And one of the things that he did in this piece, he wanted to show off what the harp could do. So he wrote a lot of what we call sort of extended technique or modern techniques. So you'll hear me use my nails on the harp. You'll hear me hit the soundboard and do just a number of other things that you really wouldn't quite expect from the harp. But it's still a really beautiful piece and um, has just a lot of effects. So I hope that you enjoy. This is going to be Song in the Night by Carlos Salzano. Thank you. 
showed you a lot of the different things that Harp can do, but one of my favorite things about that piece is that it incorporates so, such a huge range of expression on the harp that it all still comes together to give you this feeling of a song in the night and you're going on a journey. So I always love that. And I'm going to ask Crystal to come up here and budge around with the tuning for a second while I tell them about the next piece. Um, so a lot of you are playing the lever harp, um, and some of you guys are starting to play the pedal harp, and some of you guys feet doesn't even reach the pedals. Um, but there's always the option of moving to the lever harp at some point if you want to. The or sorry, the pedal harp. The lever harp is great too. Um, my specialty happens to be in the pedal harp, so I'm going to play you guys a piece that's uh, sort of a showcase for the pedals. Not so much for the fingers, but for the pedals. It's another piece by Carlos Salzedo. And it, uh, it involves some of those um, extended techniques, but mostly it makes a sort of melody out of the sounds that the pedals make as they change. So the, there's three notches and for three pitches, flat, natural, and sharp on each string. So when you plug one and you move the pedal and the string's still ringing, you hear a buzz. And most of the time, we try with all our might to not have these buzzes, but in this case, I am trying to have these buzzes very rhythmically, and you'll hear uh, very clearly a melody out of it, and you'll see sometimes that I'll have played something, and you'll be hearing a little melody, but you won't see my hands playing anything, and that's because I'm using my feet. And I accidentally left my special pedal shoes in the other room, so I'm just going to play this one barefooted, because um, sometimes the shoes I'm wearing right now stick a little bit on really difficult pieces. But, um, of course I ask you, no, it's nothing in particular, I just thought that it was a little, of course I ask you to do that right before you play Deseret, and like, you know, play really hard in your heart, but well, we uh, had some string issues to do it, to it. so they were almost all of them yes. new. So. Yes, one thing that happens a lot to all of us musicians, but particularly hard, it's because we have so many, is strings break, and then you put them back on, and it takes forever for them to tune, so Crystal's harp just got restrung, so it's got a great sound but we have to work with it <laughs> in terms of intonation. So anyhow, this is La Deserad by Carlos Salcedo.
contrast. So we're going to go from that to a Baroque piece. And if I could ask you up again to help me out. I'm sorry, I hate to be such a stickler no. about it, but especially with the, the candle, it'll, yes. it'll, it'll sound. But So the next thing I'm going to play for you is a Handel Concerto for Harp in B-flat. I'm going to play the first movement of it for you, which is something that us harpists you guys will all come to know because it is just a huge staple of our repertoire. Uh, I'm playing a version that was arranged by Sal Zato. Uh, the way that it wor worked in the Baroque era with concertos is um, a composer would compose a concerto and, then this, and it would be fairly skeletal in nature. There wouldn't necessarily be a lot of ornaments that they wrote in. That was left up to the performer and often the performer improvised that. So. A uh, composer would sit down on the performer's stand, this very skeletal outline, you know, just the melodies and the harmonies, sort of in some ways like a lead sheet. It was a little bit more filled out than that, but the performer would add in all the ornaments and all of the decorative features of the piece. So uh, what we do nowadays a lot of times is play transcriptions that, that a harpist has written out all these ornaments that you would normally do sort of in concert, and so this particular version is uh, transcribed by Salzedo, the guy who wrote the earlier pieces, but you won't hear anything too crazy because it's a Baroque concerto, and so he wrote appropriately for that. So the original concerto is a much, much more simple than what I'm going to play. What I'm going to play is a little bit of a virtuosic showpiece for those of us that decide we want to spend all our lives in the practice room. Um, the other thing I want to tell you guys about this is um, that Handel wrote it in 1736, and he wrote it as part of an oratorio uh, called Alexander's Feast. And it was, it's called Alexander's Feast or the Power of Music. And it was written to celebrate um, the feast day of St. Cecilia, who's the patron saint of music uh, and musicians in particular. And the entire thing is about how music can rouse so many passions in people and take them over a great, a great um, sort of expanse of emotions. And in this, uh, um, in the, so in the story where we're at when the harp concerto comes in is, and a lot of times handle concertos as sort of interludes just in between uh, when everybody was moving on and off stage just to sort of set the mood a little more and make it a really enjoyable evening. But So where we are in the story of Alexander's Feast is Alexander the Great has just conquered the city of Persepolis, which is was the biggest um, city in Persia and is the head of the Persian Empire. And so he has just gone in there and, ta and taken over. And it's he's really happy about it because about 100 years before that, the Persians burned down Athens and the Acropolis. And he's Greek, so he was not so happy with them. So he finally goes and expands his empire and takes over at Persepolis. And he is having a feast in the palace. And so uh, when the harp comes in, it's just very much towards the beginning of the piece. And they're just talking about how great it, you know how great it is to basically be them. They just won the war, and so they want to celebrate and have a good time and not think at all of bad things. We'll come back to that in a second because I want to tell you how the story ends. It's very interesting. So Alexander and his friends start having a really good time. They have a lot of drinks, a lot, and then they decide that it's a really good idea to burn.